All right, so here's the situation. Uh, you got a uh, brand new to you, or maybe even a used one from way back when, or whatever, I suppose it doesn't matter. You've got a Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance SP. It doesn't really matter, they're all the same. Problem is, the power doesn't seem to work right. Uh, so maybe your battery life is significantly shittier than expected uh, for an SP. It could it could just be your battery, um, but probably not, and we'll we'll get into get into that later. Um, you know, maybe the power light will flicker. You put new batteries in, and then just you know, half an hour later or whatever, you got a red light already. Um, if you accidentally touch the power switch, it'll just reset on you. Something like that. It doesn't matter. Those are all the same issue. Uh, and let's see if we can't get that fixed. Now. I've got here a brand new to me Game Boy Advance from uh, J4U because as we all know I have a problem and uh, I keep buying this junk and well quite frankly I have no idea if that's what's wrong with this Game Boy Advance. Um, of course like most of the consoles that I get from them uh, they say it's junk but it'll work at least one to five times or um, even as far as we couldn't get it to power on. Now, this console, I didn't see any corrosion on it when I bought it. And by the way, I bought this a long time ago. They're on like 8,000 something now. This is a 6,000. Anyway, um, let's pop some batteries in. Let's pop a game in and see what we get. Fortunately, the clip on this battery is broken, battery cover. But I suppose we don't really need it for testing, but I'll hold it in anyway. Everything feels fine, but let's see if it uh, let's see if it works for me. Usually it does. <laughs> and there we go. So of course I do have a red power light, and these batteries aren't fresh, but they shouldn't be dead either. Uh, let me uh, let me peel that off so you can actually see. I like keeping stuff like this, but. Unfortunately, that's not happening in this case. The camera just does not want to focus. All right, so didn't even boot up a game. It did boot up the uh, flash cart just fine. Just to to show you what's going on here. See, they're not low, they're on the low end of good, but they're still perfectly fine. Same thing with that one. So the fix to this, we gotta crack it open, and we gotta try and clean the power switch here. Um, now you can, you have to open it up at the very least, there's no getting around that. Uh, I've seen some other methods where people will, um, I don't know, just douse some rubbing alcohol or uh, isopropyl alcohol in there or something, or uh, contact cleaner or whatever. And yes, that does work, but it's a temporary fix at best. It's probably only going to last you a few weeks, a few months, and then it's going to start having that problem again. The uh, true fix that I've seen that gets rid of this relatively permanently, I mean at least for another 10-15 years, uh, you, you gotta open up the switch and you gotta just physically clean out all the soot and carbon buildup and whatnot. And uh, so six tri-point screws and then one JIS screw, that is not in the right spot. That's okay. And again, this is a Game Boy Advance, but all models of Game Boy are the same except for the original Game Boy, which the power switch doesn't tend to go bad on, and the Game Boy Lite, which you don't have to actually desolder to get into. Uh, let me go ahead and boot up my soldering iron here. But this is the part you want to get at. You want to desolder this metal shielding around the power switch itself. And... Uh, you should remove it all the way from the case, but this is this is good enough on a Game Boy Advance, I think. 
and there is plenty of cleaning that I need to do with this console in particular. But that's another video for another time. You get, I like to use a uh, small razor blade here. So you can just jam that under the shielding. That's okay if you bend it a little, bend it back. Let me uh, make sure it's all nice and in focus. And that out of the way. All right. This side's always a little bit harder because that itty bitty resistor right there. Just have a hard time making good contact with the iron. There we go. And so not all of these uh, power switches are like this, but this one actually is, unlike the last time I did one of these videos, this part is uh, directional. Come on, why aren't you focusing? I'm going to say the magic words like AVE. There we go. So uh, on the back of it here, you can see there's a little bit of a cutout. Whereas on the front, it's straight. So pay attention to that. Not all of them are that way, but this one is. All right, so once you got that off, I'm going to go ahead and bend the uh, legs back into place since I kind of bent them out when I was pulling this thing out. And then another thing I like to do that helps with reinstallation is to give it a little bit of an M shape where you bow the middle down. But we're done with that. We'll set that aside. Onto the main event here. You can see the actual problem. That is supposed to be gold-plated copper in there. It's not supposed to be this black stained mess. The switch itself, if it'll focus, you can see actually does look pretty good. We probably don't have to do a lot of cleaning on that. I will because it's already out, but this is where we'll have to focus our efforts. So the easiest way, I think, to clean it, one of these uh, cotton swabs here. And uh, I like these uh, uh, cardboard ones in particular. Ugh. I'm totally prepared um, because you can cut the end off and then you're left with just this carbon stump or cardboard stump and if you get a little bit of isopropyl alcohol on there you know get it nice and sopping wet I suppose you can't really see that even if it wasn't focused I notice that fits in there Nicely, and you can rub that around. Make some terrible noises, but you can see how much gunk it's cleaning off. Now, what this gunk is, this is uh, carbon buildup on the contacts. Every time you switch the Game Boy on or off, it is... Uh, the power is arcing across these contacts. God, that's awful. I'm so sorry. Granted, it is a very small arc flash, but it is still an arc. All right, so this is actually turning out to be a way better example than I'd hoped. Um, I'm still cleaning it, but I'm having kind of a hard time with this. It's not going so well. On these consoles and of course this is an absolute last resort you should not do this you do not have to 
but in this case I do. And I even have it right here, nice and handy. I'm going to dip the end of my cotton swab in a little bit of baking soda. So it's still wet from the isopropyl alcohol and the baking soda is just sticking to it. But baking soda is an abrasive, which means I am wearing away at the material by doing this. But I'm using the baking soda to scrub off all that extra gunk. Again, last resort. That's how you can tell the cotton swab's not wet enough if it's not making that awful noise. There we go, that is looking significantly better. And nearly all of the uh, baking soda fell out, which is fine. But since I'm not done, I need a little bit more. There we go. It's not perfect, but it doesn't have to be. It is still significantly better than it was. And I know it's kind of hard to see on camera. I can't get the lighting right, the angle just right. Uh, but it is a lot better than it was. Would you stop there? Good lord. Okay. Next. I'm going to get the other side of the cotton swab. And go over this. Just absolutely sopping wet. Just want to make sure I get all of that bacon soda. We do not want it to live in there now that we're done. And last but not least, I'll get this one. Now this isn't one of, there are a few different types of these things, of these um, sliders. And this is one of the easier ones to clean. In fact, it looks pretty much clean already, um, but sometimes it helps. You got to stick like a knife or, in my case, my tweezers in there to hold the uh, actual wiper down while you're running across it with the cotton swab. I'd call that clean, though. That one cleaned up real easily. You don't have to focus on this side too much, but now that we've got that, we want to do one more thing. I want to bend these tabs up just a little bit. Probably way less than it looked like on the video. We'll do both sides here. And that's what it should look like. Pop that back in there. And let's pop the shielding back on. We'll to solder it back down. I'm using the tip of my tweezers to apply pressure. Because you have to make sure that the shielding is absolutely perfectly flush. If the shielding is not flush, then uh, your power switch is going to work even worse than it did before. Shouldn't have to add solder either. There should still be plenty on there. You can if you want. It'll just make it harder on yourself if you have to take it back apart though. Okay. It ain't perfect, but it doesn't have to be. Let's check it out. So you can see that's nice and flush there. The uh, switch. 
still actuates fine. It's a little tight, but it'll break in. Plus, it's in the shell. It doesn't matter too much. That still feels fine. All right, let's put this thing sort of back together. I'm not going to put all the screws back in, but... Need to do the one by the power switch for sure. Need to bring that up. This one. And this one. And let's try it out. Exact same batteries. Oh, don't want to spoil it, not yet. As you could hear, it does clearly work, but let's see if we get a green light this time. Uh, still red. Well, that doesn't really prove my point, does it? If nothing else, though, it is significantly brighter. So it could be that it doesn't like this flash cart. These batteries could also be a little bit more dead than I thought they were. Of course, that's a pretty bad, uh, bad experiment if we use different batteries, but just for good measure, let's make sure we can get a green light. And look at that. So I'm pretty confident in saying that the uh, issue that this thing did have, whatever that may have been, was just fixed by me cleaning it. Now, of course, I still gotta spend quite a bit more time to actually physically... There's another issue I should talk about. Um, yeah, I still gotta physically clean this thing. It's still really gross. Um, but uh, real quick, before I, uh, before I end the video, I do wanna mention a couple more things. The battery contacts themselves should also clean those. As you could tell, my Game Boy actually reset while I had my fingers on the batteries. Uh, in this case, there's no corrosion or anything that needs to be cleaned up, thankfully. But that was uh, that was by design. I try not to buy Game Boys that are drowned in corrosion. Uh, but it's always good measure to get the contacts a clean. The uh, left side ones you can actually replace if you want. Got to pop the shell off to get them out, but not too bad. Another issue: these batteries are um, these batteries in particular are salvaged from a rechargeable battery pack, and so the uh, protrusion on the positive side isn't nearly as big as it would be on uh, normal alkalines or even normal rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries you can see it's a more defined hump on it this is just or i guess a bump whereas this is just a big old hump so that could cause issues as well but i think it should work even better now now it doesn't even make contact yeah you can see right here it just barely touches that's okay. You can tell it's the batteries because it acts up when I spin them. Let's keep hitting shit with my hand now. No issues. So there we go. We just need to go ahead and give that a clean. I am definitely not going to update the firmware on this Game Boy, uh, or using this Game Boy. Not while I'm spinning the batteries around. That's dangerous. Must have been hitting the L button while I was booting it. But yeah, there you go. Clean the battery switch, clean the terminals, and you're golden. Um, I did mention this at the beginning of the video. If you have an SP, it might be your battery. So. 
I mean, obviously you don't have to clean the battery switches, but it is within your best interest to get an actual new battery, not one that was made 15 years ago for a Nintendo DS, but one that's actually new, newly manufactured. And I did make a video on installing cells like these uh, without having to mod your Game Boy. Um, of course, this one is also modded, but that's, that's besides the point. Anyway, there you go. There's your fixed Game Boy. Thanks for watching, guys, and have an excellent evening.